C'est une mini richesse. Haïti, c'est un boule diamant. Pourtant, petite lia souffre dans la misère. Parce qu'elle nous refusait de mettre nous ensemble. C'est ça que je viens de dire. Je viens de dire nous sommes capables, si nous voulons, c'est mentalité au bon chèche. Compatriotes, moi, Jour arrivé pour nous mettre terre, rivière, soleil là, à mon ensemble. Pour nous développer le pays. In Haiti's capital, Mourners laid flowers at a tribute to President Jovenel Moïse. The brazen attack unfolded overnight at the private residence of Haitian President Jovenel Moïse. Moïse was shot dead at his home by what Haitian authorities describe as a unit of assassins. The gunmen speaking English and Spanish reportedly yelled they were DEA agents, but the Haitian government says they were instead mercenaries, highly trained killers who shot dead the 53-year-old Moïse and critically wounded his wife. You knew who the president was fighting against. These people hired mercenaries to kill the president and his family due to the projects for roads, electricity, drinking water supply, organization of the referendum and elections, for the final abolition of political transitions. The president has always believed in institutions and stability. It's not clear who paid for the mercenaries who allegedly carried out the attack, many of them former members of the Colombian military. But while that investigation continues, so does the political uncertainty. Deuxième Chanel, moi, en Jodia, nous allons parler de l'assassination de président Jovenel Moïse. We are going to be talking about the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse, also known as Haiti's most recent president as of right now, 2021. Now, let me just say that my deepest condolences go out to the Moïse family and everyone else that has been affected by this. I feel deeply deeply saddened by everything that's been going on everyone that is stuck in haiti right now that can't catch flights to go back home everyone that is very very afraid in haiti or for haiti um i am like so crippled by this like even though i'm in america even though i was born in america i feel like we all have a deepened sadness we all feel really really disappointed I feel like we are all going through a time where we all feel a deepened sadness, a sense of uncertainty, and most importantly, embarrassed. But I'm telling you this right now, I don't give a fuck about what's going on in Haiti. Ain't nothing about to stop me from wearing my flag, representing my country, and saying that I'm Haitian 365. Haiti goes through a lot of shit. People talk shit about Haiti all the time. But I will say this, and I will say this all the time. A lot of people that talk shit about Haiti don't know anything about Haiti. They don't know about the history. They don't know about all of the things that has been done and continuously is done to Haiti in order to make it look bad, in order to steal its resources, in order to rape it of its glory. Therefore, if you don't know anything about Haiti or its history, I don't want to hear about anything negative that you have to say about it. If you're one of those people that's feeling embarrassed, I definitely know how you feel right Right now when I heard about all of this that was going on this gave me legit anxiety for a long time especially since like I literally just moved I literally moved on June 30th 
this all went down on july 7th and i was just like oh my god like this is not the time for it i literally have been going through like a really deep depression i've been going through a lot so i literally had to gather my thoughts not only to make sure that everything that i brought to you guys was accurate but to make sure that everything that i brought to you made sense because let me just say this right now everything that they give you guys is most likely going to be a whole crock of caca okay if you guys pay attention to all of these theories that they're trying to spew, a lot of it doesn't make logical sense, okay? A lot of it is filled with half-truths, BS, and lies. And I'm actually getting real annoyed because at this point, I feel like they're just telling us what we want to hear. They're trying to turn us against each other, but at the same time, trying to make us mad at foreign entities and it's it's getting me upset <laughs> they're trying to break up our allies with foreign entities that are actually helping us and to be quite honest i feel like all of these theories are half truths but half lies in some way somehow all of these theories actually are working together in a sense so we're going to explore all of these theories because in actuality i feel like every single person and every single theory and honestly any and everyone had a reason to do this now forgive me i'm going to be very emotional in this video this type of shit really annoys me i get very very passionate when it comes to haiti when it comes to people talking shit about haiti so i'm gonna just say that i really don't like the fact that a lot of people are saying that you know he was a dictator he was this he was that and i'm only gonna say this only because you guys have done any research about any president you would know that they say this about every single Haitian president, bro. I don't think there's been any Haitian president that wasn't accused of embezzling or stealing money, hasn't been accused of being a dictator, hasn't been accused of being a horrible president, hasn't been accused of literally just being bad, okay? You guys literally do the same thing. I don't know why just because this man has been assassinated all of a sudden it changes and all of a sudden now you guys are trying to make it seem like he was a good person i will also say that please try to remain respectful somewhat in the comment section because this is someone's father this is someone's family member this is someone who meant something to a lot of people right however i have to also say that this is also someone that a lot of people think did a lot of bad things to their family members so i don't think that it is fair to be celebrating someone's death okay if this is someone that you think did something to your family you would not be out here remembering his death in a positive way let's use our common sense right we would not but in the same breath it does not look good on our nation it does not look good on you as a person to be out here celebrating this person's death please remain respectful if you don't like the person be silent if you love the person show your respect that's it you can express your opinions without being disrespectful and you can also show your respect without saying blatant bullshit that you know is damn well not true any disrespect will be blocked promptly if i see it i'm gonna just have to say this outright i had a few people coming at me saying why i didn't talk about this on my main platform why i didn't speak up about this and it's like you guys need to pay attention and actually check before you run your mouth because women okay i'm not these fucking people i will curse you the fuck out right i have a haitian channel and anything regarding haiti stays on my haitian channel for a fucking reason that's why i have a haitian channel i am a person with mental illnesses i talk about this all the time i got bipolar anxiety ptsd all this extra shit so my thing is these types of things take time for me to do when I say I'll do a video on them. And honestly, I'm not entitled to do videos about them. On top of that, I was talking about this shit on Instagram ever since it's happened. I also don't follow Radio Televisión, okay? You guys were sitting here talking about how the first lady died and honestly pushing a whole bunch of fucking false information. And I did not want to go and push false information on the internet. I did not want to be part of that because I want to be the first to do it, okay? Do not ever in your life think it makes sense to pull up in my DM or pull up on any of my posts saying that I have to say something or I have to make a statement or I have to do this, that, and the third because you're gonna get cursed the fuck out. Because then you're gonna get upset saying I'm rude and I'm this, that, and the third. But let me just tell you this right now, it is not my job or any other like figure, celebrity, or whatever job to speak about anything. 
This is a very emotionally taxing job, okay? This is something that is very hard for us to do. When we're talking about people dying, people getting assassinated, things like this is very hard to talk about, okay? This is a lot bigger than people making videos, people making statements, and people just sitting up here talking about something for entertainment purposes. We have to dig up into things. We have to see how many times this person was shot, if this person was tortured. This is people's lives we're talking about. So until you can do this as a full-time job, I don't want to hear about you people telling me or telling other people that we are responsible for doing this that and the third this is not your fucking job y'all just get on the internet for key 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 purposes as official reports state july 7th at 1 a.m jovenel moise was brutally assassinated in his private home and his wife martine was also injured in the attack he was was shot approximately 12 times some reports say 16 times but he was hit in the forehead the abdomen and the chest and the hip with a nine millimeter and a large Glock pistol the first lady was hit in the hand arm and abdomen and she was later transported to Miami for treatment where they thought that she could be safe now you guys are probably wondering how in the hell were people able to execute this hit with no police, no witnesses, no ambulance, no cops, where's the security? Honestly, we all said the same shit. In all honesty, this shit made absolutely no sense and is the most embarrassing of the entire story and the most bizarre because where the fuck was everyone else in this situation? Not only does it not make sense that the president is living in Port-au-Prince in a private address, among civilians that seemingly didn't know or didn't care to report what was going on but where the fuck where's the security where's the police but like how is there a video circulating around that shows the troops that literally entered his home personally i don't understand why he has a private address that literally is among civilians but i'm actually going to highlight his life in the next video so please stay tuned for that but basically, I actually found an article as I was doing research for this that basically highlighted the night of the murder. So this is actually something that's gonna go into one of the theories and this shit actually blew my mind. This has led me to believe that everyone in this situation is a whole crock of motherfucking liars, okay? So bear with me. This video that you guys have saw with these seemingly American agents that has a lot of people thinking that America had a lot to do with this is literally of a neighbor that was shooting this video. Basically, the neighbor gave the story to a media outlet. So basically, there was a civilian who was literally like right next door, um, you know, around the area at the moment. And he was tossing and turning in his bed. He was literally just watching a soccer match, chilling, when he heard a bunch of DEA agents, allegedly, outside of his window. Now, the thing is, Haitians are not stupid. A couple of people that actually had different angles of the footage, but this is the one that actually went viral and basically they knew that the uniforms were fake and they knew that these weren't american agents because of course these people were speaking spanish and they were speaking spanish in an american accent this is where you know a lot of those theories were coming from and basically they were like you know what this is the dea don't come out or we'll shoot this is why of course there is no one coming out and definitely there were people calling the police there were people you know essentially trying to call for help however no one ever came because there's dea agents but of course there were some brave people that had sense to record what was going on and basically they saw these dea agents go into moise's house storm the front entrance and silence these guards which i don't fucking understand what kind of police personnel security personnel that's supposed to be guarding the president are easily silenced by some fucking random fake ass usda agent honestly they all need to be fired and to be honest if anything they need to be looked into which i heard they're actually being you know questioned for coercion or whatever but child Okay, so apparently, you know, they 
tied them up or were babysitting them or whatever. While some went inside, they rummaged through, they found the maid, they bound and gagged the maid, threw the maid in one of the bedrooms. They found Jovenel and his wife and apparently they just unleashed, okay? They shot up Jovenel, they shot at the wife, they started rummaging through all of the furniture and at this time, one of his daughters, Jo Marley, managed to hear everything that was going on and went to go hide in one of her brother's bedrooms. Thankfully, none of the kids that were in the house were harmed. You know, they didn't really take much. And you know, by, by 1.30 a.m., everything was done. That article where I read that story is linked down below. Now, later on after that article was posted, there was a whole nother post that was posted, which personally, I don't understand how this makes any sense. Now, this story corroborates with what the first lady said. Mercenaries murdered my husband because of roads, water, electricity, referendum, and elections. They murdered him without letting him say a word. That's essentially what she said in a nutshell. I'm like, okay, this all makes sense. However, there is a conflicting account that says that all of this started around 10 p.m. And essentially, Jovenel was screaming and pleading for help. And all of this was a whole ordeal of torture. And he was being tortured for a long period of time. And it wasn't just an in and out type of situation where in, shoot him and go out. So I'm just sitting here like, wait. This doesn't make any sense. Someone's lying here. Was he shot up or was he tortured? Even with these official reports, there's lots of missing gaps, right? So Joe Marley ended up running into the room for safety. I, I didn't hear anything about what the other kids were doing. Um, did the maid get out? And then it says that a couple of hours later, it was actually Judge Carl Henry Destin that arrived at the scene and found, you know, the president on the floor and the first lady was still alive. Why did it take hours for anyone to call for help? That doesn't even make logical sense. Even though they said, you know, DEA don't shoot. You're telling me all these neighbors just let that man lay on the ground. The fake DEA left. And then what makes it worse is that fake DEA, they ran to the embassy of Taiwan. And you guys already know that official story. If you guys do not know, I'll link it down below. They ran to the Taiwan embassy, ditched their weapons, burned the house down. They caught half of them. Some of them exchanged gunfire with the Haiti police department. It was a whole story, which I'm not going to get into because like I said, that whole thing I feel like was orchestrated. I don't believe half of that malarkey. I think all of that's bullshit and I think all of that is a diversion. In that whole other rendition of the story, it also says that Jovenel not only was calling for help and was possibly tortured, it says that he also called his previous prime minister Claude Joseph for help and Claude Joseph was out here saying that help was on the way and help never motherfucking came. So... This shit don't make sense. And we're gonna get into Claude Joseph a little bit later because son ain't right with him. So I'm just sitting here like, so who's telling the truth here? First of all, let me just start off by saying this theory is very annoying and there's just too many parts to it. And every single day, there's a new piece of the puzzle that just doesn't fit and doesn't make any sense that we did not ask for, okay? So Mr. Fake Prime Minister Claude Joseph, Shaq Ju, he's sitting here running his mouth and that's not even his job. So I'm, I'm really tired of him and he's just sus, okay? So recently, he's actually been named a suspect. Thank God. They now named him as a suspect. I don't know what y'all was doing, but whoever's writing these little stories, they're doing a horrible job, okay? Even America does a way better job at writing fake stories. So this is how I know. Even though America is actually assisting with this investigation, whoever's writing these fake stories, it's definitely not America. It's definitely Haitians. So IET, Haitian. N'importe mon cap fait et story sa yo, histoire yo, nous fa fait bon, okay? If you're gonna lie, do it right, do it correct, because you guys are doing a horrible job with these stories. This is like really bad and it's it's just, it's not a good look. You guys are doing a horrible job. This shit is ridiculous. Li pa want, okay? You can't be sitting here talking about some, the president was tortured, the president was this, that, and the third, when you literally have been thought to be called while the president was being tortured. Upa want what she thought talk about some the president was tortured when you were called, sir. Bruh, hush, sit down. So the US is assisting in the investigation, but they won't send troops. And honestly, I think that's great. Haiti needs to literally handle this themselves. US has always intervened in Haiti's crisis. And honestly, I feel like United Nations I don't understand. 
United States can't even solve its own crimes effectively, and Haiti can't even walk straight, and you want us to believe that they magically captured all of these mercenaries on a wild goose chase in less than 24 hours and cracked the code. Yeah, please help me understand, bruh. First of all, Haiti, that's not even a real police force, so miss me with it, eh? Okay? And America, y'all can't even tell us who really shot JFK. So, I... <laughs> don't get me started this shit don't make no sense furthermore y'all said that y'all questioned these men and they were talking about some oh well you know we only thought we were kidnapping and you know it wasn't our guns you know we were the ones outside but you know when we heard that like everything was going on you know we were shocked so like I said, guys, every day this whole theory with these men changes. Every day it's a new piece, it's a new this, it's a new that. I even saw a whole interview with one of the um, men and their wife, girlfriend or whatever. And I'm just like, y'all are really trying to distract us. Like, it's so annoying because every day it's just a new this and a new that and a new suspect and a new story. And I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not paying this any more mind. It's, it's really freaking hilarious. And it, it really makes me wonder because all of these shots rang right and who who knows because at this point that's another thing why the fuck is there not a consistent number of shots i see he got shot 12 times 10 times 15 times shit at one point i saw 20 times how many times was the president shot can someone tell me it's been about a week it's been about a week and some change where's the ballistics where's the ballistic report huh huh why in the world you guys claim y'all found these men right you also claim that you found these weapons. Where is the ballistics report? You found all of these shiny little weapons. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. We found out. Yeah, right. Okay. Why did you not run a ballistic report on all of this shit? This is how I know this shit is full of caca, bruh. I'm calling all the bullshit today. I want all the smoke. I chose violence, okay? I chose violence. Some food get tough. And like I said, this is why I said question everything, okay? The timeline makes no sense. The fact that everyone just sat by and just let this man sit here and scream for his life or not scream for his life, whether this was a, a you know couple of hour torture ordeal or whether this was an in and out type of situation, all of it makes no fucking sense. And everyone is sus. I don't trust this Claude Joseph, okay? at all and to be quite honest i love sweet mickey i am a sweet mickey fan i'm a michelle martelli fan i love him but my money is literally on sweet mickey or claude joseph okay one or the other claude joseph done stepped down got kicked out whatever the case may be now he all up in the spotlight and he wanted to have his little silent moment or whatever the fuck and that shit was barely that nigga was loud as fuck and he's still loud as fuck you not silent motherfucker and you not low you look guilty okay you look real guilty I don't trust that nigga. As soon as I saw him, I was like, mm, you look guilty. He don't look like he's in sorrow. He don't look like, like, he just don't look like somebody that's in mourning at all. Like, he just, he looks sus. And then the whole Michelle Martelly thing we gonna get into. So, it's like, ugh, both of them just real sus to me. And then, of course, there's, you know, the other theories that we're gonna get into. Everything we're gonna get into, guys. Mm, stay tuned. Sorry, I just had to chime in for this. Mm, 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 mm. Like, I don't want to say that the first lady is lying or that, you know, she's making things up. But a lot of things could be a trauma response. She was definitely hurt as well. But something just doesn't make sense here. Also, that whole rendition of him being tortured could also be a lie. But let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Those of you guys who live in Haiti, definitely comment your thoughts and opinions down below. I'm pretty sure people that live in the area can definitely give me a better synopsis of what happened because i feel like something's lying maybe something in between is the definite truth so definitely let's get into things that make a lot more sense into what's going on here <sighs> now there's a lot of plausible theories here but i think the most important thing is that we do not think with emotion that we think with our heads and we do not let the media play into our minds because a lot of the shit right here that they trying to tell us is a whole bunch of caca and whatever the official story that they give us is not gonna be real let's be a hundred percent honest and literally please i beg of you whatever theory they give us question it and this goes with everything in the world okay everything in your life that they give you question it. compared to a lot of the things that a lot of the past presidents have done 
from Duvalier and before Duvalier, it's like, this is what you guys are mad at. Like, at this point, you guys are just mad at everything, and I feel like you guys are just never fucking satisfied. Okay, we're talking about people have Tonton Maku fucking cutting people's heads off and shit, and then you guys are justifying it, talking about some, that's how you have to deal with Haitians, when at least the streets was clean. This is what we're talking about here, with Haitians justifying this. Meanwhile, lots of people's family members are still missing, dead or in jail because of this man, and this is how y'all justify this shit. This is how y'all justify this shit. Meanwhile, y'all kill this man over money, over him not stepping down. Ass backwards. I'm actually really annoyed now just thinking about this. You guys really sit there and be like, okay, this is how you deal with Haitians. To justify the fact that this man cultivated his own army that sat there and killed people in the streets for opposing him. Literally had a legitimate dictatorship. I'm just saying, this shit don't make no sense to me. It just doesn't. Like, and, and Haiti's had a couple of dictatorships. And everyone that I've seen that's pro these dictatorships has literally made the excuses of this is how you deal with Haitians. So let's just get into the whole essence of the fact that a lot of people were saying, you know, Haitians may burn things down and Haitians may fight each other, but they would never kill a leader. They don't have the heart. Oh, y'all, do we not remember the other assassination of President Vilbrom Guillaume? Oh, y'all don't remember? Of course not, because a lot of us weren't even born. So let me refresh you guys' memory. Around the wake of, I believe, the First World War I, okay, when Woodrow Wilson was president of the United States, there was a president that Haiti had that was maliciously assassinated. Do you guys know how he was assassinated? Comment down below. Actually, I'm going to give you guys some time. Let's see if, how, how well you guys know your Haitian history. Haitians in the street. Yes, beat to death by Haitians in the street. Again, this is how this president was assassinated because Haitians were very unhappy with how he was running the country. Haitians, let me just say this right now. I love my Haitians. I love my country. I love you guys so much. But you guys have a long history of every single time you guys are unsatisfied or don't like something, you guys handle it with violence and you guys take matters into your own hands. And this is not how shit has to work. You guys cannot do that shit. So honestly, miss me with it with this whole nonsense of, oh, well, Haitians would never do this to their own. Bullshit, okay? Of course Haitians would do this to their own and this has to be our fucking people. I don't give a fuck. Whether it's elites, light skins, whites, whatever. Honestly, if y'all know y'all history, yet again, everybody on the Haitian island is Haitian, bitch. Period. So, whether it was an elite, a white Haitian, a Chinese Haitian, whatever the case may be, that's our motherfucking people. And our people did that shit. Get your shit to fucking together. Okay? I can love my people and hold my people accountable at the same fucking time. Y'all need to get it together. We all need to get it together. This is unacceptable fucking behavior. You cannot sit here and justify dictatorships, justify presidents that you like, and then overlook the history that we have of being sauvage when we don't like something. It's unacceptable. I find it insane that the past few presidents have been able to leave. Shit, the past presidents for a long time have been able to leave without any incident in terms of being maimed or assassinated, okay? And for those of you who have the nerve to try to like, oh my God, are you somebody talking about it? Did you not see the riots? Are you guys dumb? I said without being maimed or without legit incident. Of course, people rioted in the street or whatever, but they didn't even get a bun on thrown at their head, okay? People let these presidents leave without being maimed or assassinated. Like, these people were not seriously injured or hurt. They were able to leave office just fine. The whole situation of him refusing to step down might have been a whole thing. Another theory that could have been a real serious one that a lot of people love to bring up was that his time was up, right? So essentially, because Haitians love to riot and cause problems when things don't go their way, he was supposed to allegedly leave office this year, okay? February of 2021. And this is why this is a little murky, and I'm gonna explain this in my next video. So please listen up. So when Sweet Mickey was in office, 
he technically left office in 2016 a little bit early he did his five years however Haitians were so upset and so mad about how he was running the country that they forced him to leave before he could finish the elections so since he was forced to leave prematurely someone else had to finish the elections and basically they feel like since he stepped down that is technically when Moise's term started because according to the ever-changing constitution that Haiti changes more than they change clothes that that is when the Haitian presidential term starts. But technically, he was not really brought into office until February 2017. So during the election, of course, lots of fraud, lots of problems, lots of riots. Everything was postponed numerous times again. So he was not literally put into office till February of 2017. So his term would not be done until February of 2022, giving him his solid five years. Presidential terms in Haiti are five years years so realistically he would not be done till 2022 so this is where that murkiness goes it's a whole hot ass mess regardless is that reason to kill the man i don't think so people are saying that he's a dictator he's a this he's a that and it's like do you guys not know what the fuck a dictator is like this is ridiculous calling him a dictator is a little bit much considering the dictators that haiti has had in the past let's get into mr michel martelly aka sweet mickey aka mr compa himself now if you guys watch my channel or you are new here make sure you guys go watch my previous presidential video on michelle martelly michelle martelly was the previous president of haiti and he was also a super duper mega pop star he is one of the compa pioneers and he is very well respected in the compa genre however he kind of fucked up his reputation by being president of haiti a lot of people accused him of of course the regular regular schmegular silencing opposition embezzling money and just overall not being a good president like i said the regular schmegular but one thing he is very very known for is actually putting jovenel moise on the map now when jovenel moise was running for president nobody knew who the fuck Jovenel Moise was. Now, what's very interesting is Jovenel Moise has a very, very interesting past in terms of businesses, okay? He was a very lucrative businessman. Now, I'm going to get into this in my next video about him. Make sure you guys stay tuned. But he had a very lucrative bonon business. You know, he helped establish water wells and whatever. However, he was more so known in Port de Pa, you know, on day or those type of areas. But in terms of Port-au-Prince and, you know, in the bustling areas in terms of politics, nobody knew who he was he was more well so known with the common people of haiti that really couldn't vote okay that's the best way to explain it the people that really didn't have the authority to vote and this is very important to understand because if you can't vote how the fuck do you get the votes and some way somehow he literally somehow garnered over 50 plus some of the votes now let me just say that again if you know anything about Haiti's politics and Haiti's elections, some way, somehow, there's always voter fraud involved. And with this case, it was strange because he literally garnered over 55% of the vote. But at the same time, it's not that strange because Mickey was backing the fuck out of this man, okay? When I'm talking backing him, the, b backing him. If you guys remember my video or if you know anything about the Sweet Mickey regime, okay? I call him the Sweet Mickey regime, okay? I know a lot of people be like, oh no, it's Michel Matéli, nigga. He's only gonna be Sweet Mickey. Okay, sweet Mickey. Sweet Mickey Lee at the home. I don't give a fuck if that nigga becomes president of the United States. He's gonna be sweet Mickey. Okay, sweet Mickey Lee at the home. Alright. During the Michel Martelly regime, he literally announced him as his candidate for the Tet Kale party. Why is it called the Tet Kale party? Haitians don't take anything serious. Why the fuck would you name your political party the Tet Kale party? This is the problem. The another problem that Haiti has is every time someone becomes a politician, they have to form a new party. That's another issue. There's like, what, over a hundred different parties in Haiti? For what? He was essentially like backing the hell out of him. And before he did this, his government, if that's what you can call it, tossed millions. When I'm telling you millions, oh my lord, y'all, millions of dollars. Moise's businesses. And I, I, we're not talking about one million, two millions, y'all. Millions of dollars. And his companies. I'm not even talking about campaign. I'm saying companies. His companies that he had that he already started. So, let me just say that 
That shit don't make any fucking sense to me how you threw so much money at this man for having all these businesses. I'm talking about tax exemptions, money, loans, all types of shit. That's what your government did to literally give him a head start and an upper leg in the economy with his businesses. And then on top of that, you go and you put him as a presidential candidate. And I'm sure there was extra money on top of that given to him for his campaign. And then on top of that, Moise took an extra step and basically carbon copied his entire campaign. Literally carbon copied Martelli's entire shit. Everything that, that Sweet Mickey wanted to do, Moise wanted to do too. Which hey, y'all best friends, y'all best buddies, whatever, do that shit. But it was extremely strange. In Haiti, when you come from the, the countryside, the, the people live at, in, in PowerPoints, they think they know everything, but it's not true. This is the, I'm, I'm the example. That's interesting. On, on the countryside, you have good people also with knowledge, with vision, with capacity also. You have the next day before your birthday, you are 48. And when you got the past president like your close friend, it's, it's really good for you to get this experience. But I will work with him to see what is the mistake he was made and what is the success he, he was made also to put them together. Like I told on my campaign, I will continue. I will make a lot of correction and I will improve also. But I will work close with him because he is a past president. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a former president. It's really important for me to know exactly what is, to, to learn about his ex experience. But it's not President Mar Martelli only. I talk with other former president in Haiti. Yeah. They are on a light. And like I said, he put Moise on the map because nobody knew who the fuck Moise was. And a lot of people think, and the theory was, he did this specifically so that he can get to be president again. The idea was he was put as a puppet, kind of like how people accuse Iristeed as putting Privat as his puppet. But people accuse Iristeed as putting Privat as puppet for money, while people accuse Mickey as putting Moise as his puppet to be president again. Because if you guys are not aware, in Haiti you can't be president twice consecutively. You have to leave and rerun again. So this is really some shit and would be very, very plausible only because for someone who was so close to this man to the point where he put him in a song, yes, okay, Mickey made a song while leaving office called Balbonanla literally responding to a journalist mickey style if you guys are not aware mickey has a very very long history of dragging journalists and music this is this thing that he does so basically a journalist was talking shit about him and his presidency and instead of you know responding you know respectfully like a president should he did it his own way hey who's complaining and basically he made a song called Balbonanla basically saying give her the dick but hey I guess diplomatically Balbonanla and the reference was the Bonan man aka Moise. Moise is known as the banana man, the plantain man, Balbonanla and essentially he literally put him in the song saying oh my bow on bel regime I'm gonna you a good president you know Balbonanla give her the banana I'm gonna give you a good president you get it you get the Synopsis, like literally, he was literally a lyric in a fucking song. Like, y'all, they was cool, they was tight. Like, this was a nice little friendship. So, it's very interesting to me that when he dies, his little Twitter statement is this shit right here. Now, let me just say, social media is not everything, right? Um, it honestly really bothered me that there was people that was upset that, you know, a lot of Haitian artists and a lot of Haitian celebrities or whatever didn't speak up about what happened to the president because like i said you know you never know about what type of ties these people had to the president maybe they thought that the president was responsible to things that happened to their friends and their family maybe these people think that the president was responsible for a lot of heinous crimes heinous acts maybe they didn't like him and to be honest you don't know what these people are doing behind the scenes social media is not everything there's a life outside of social media personally i do not think it is okay to celebrate someone's death 
ever. I do not think it is okay to celebrate someone's death. I do not think it is okay to not pay respects to people. However, if someone, if I believe that someone was responsible for someone in my family's death or one of my friend's death, you're not gonna catch me out here paying respects to them, point blank, period. You just not. But at the same time, this is weird. You literally are responsible for this man being in office. How the fuck is this your response? This is just a little strange to me. It's it's very fucking strange. It just, it doesn't make any sense. So the whole general consensus is he essentially was put into power not only to embezzle money, but to put Mickey back in power when his presidency was over. And basically Moise was down with the get down, but eventually was like, mm, not don't want to do this anymore let the power get to his head was making promises he couldn't keep and did not keep bailed on all of the deals that he made with Marta Lee as well as a lot of other people that he made promises with the next one would be the bougie slash elite class and the mercenaries now this one kind of all goes together so you kind of have to follow me with this one because it's a lot so that movies was heavily and unfairly taxing the fuck out of the elite class in Haiti. Now the elite class is made up of a lot of different people, okay? Some of them are Asian, some of them are mixed, some of them are black, some of them like they, they, they look very different, but some of them you can tell are in the elite class only because they own the very successful businesses in Haiti. The very, very long standing businesses in Haiti. And they are the ones that essentially run everything. Okay, when I'm telling you run everything, I'm not joking, I'm not over exaggerating. They own everything in Haiti. To the point where if you piss off the elite, you don't want to piss off the elite. They are responsible for a lot of things that go on in Haiti. Um, you piss off the elite, more than likely you're getting killed or you're getting exiled. It's that fucking serious. And typically, the running theory is most presidents in Haiti are essentially puppets for the elite. And any president that you've seen in Haiti is not president without the okay of the elite. And if some way, somehow, someone is becoming a president or has become president and it is something that has happened without the okay of the elites then um yeah they're most likely going to force you to cooperate with whatever it is that they want and they need from you and if you do not cooperate then it's going to be held to pay it is being said that he was actually trying to bring them down he had his own personal crusade with them so there's two different theories. One theory is that they actually backed his campaigns, okay? They backed his campaign, they gave him money, they gave him so much support, they loved him, they appreciated him, he was key keying with him and everything and he was backstabbing them in the process. And it got to the point where he essentially turned their backs on them, he made promises and he backstabbed them and didn't keep these promises or he made these promises and couldn't keep these promises and essentially wrote a check his ass couldn't catch and they all turned on him and they got very very upset with him and severed ties the second theory is he made cahoots with him and took their money but in turn became real petty and not only took their money but taxed them in the process and you know run his little crusade so essentially got greedy and took the money he wanted by taxing them and pocketed it didn't even use it for haiti which is what taxes are supposed to be for and took the money for the campaign as well so he had his cake and ate it too so then they sung her ties either way that's really all fucked up in itself so that's what got him killed if you fuck with the elite's money in haiti it's gonna be hell to pay now what's very interesting is a lot of people are really catching on to this theory and if you just check the comments on instagram or you just dig deep you find some interviews i have some link down below some common names that you're gonna find of the elites in Haiti that you're gonna find some interviews with um one is the Bolo and the other one is the Vorbs now I haven't seen any interviews with the Vorbs at all but Bolo and the Vorbs are two families that are very common elites in Haiti now what's very interesting is Reginald Bolo is one man that actually did an interview and shockingly he actually revealed 
some of this information. I was like, oh, thank God. I don't have to worry about being killed for this shit. It's public knowledge. I was so happy. I was like, ooh, budget, messy. Listen, some of this information, I had to wait till it hit American media because I was like, I do not want to say this shit. Next thing you know, your TM cum like if you're not IET. So, luckily, a lot of this is in American media and, you know, you guys can look it up yourselves. A lot of my sources are linked down below. Some of this is something, you know, I had to go, you know, hit a couple people up. Fuck out the what? But, like, for the most part, a lot of this has been divulged. I'm shocked that he even said this. I was like, oh, he's saying the real shit right here. So, very interesting. Like, he was like, yeah, you know, even my name's floating around. A lot of people wanted to kill him. He got way too cocky. He's a hypocrite. He wanted to take us down. But, you know, whatever it is, what it is, oh, well. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that's basically what he said in a nutshell. That's not verbatim. But it was like, wow. Damn. Now, of course, that correlates with stealing petrol money. Now, this kind of goes with the whole mercenary aspect. Now, like I said, the bougie mercenary elite goes with the whole bolo and the vorbs and also goes with the petrol money. Now, stealing petrol money is something that is very plausible. And woo child, oh my lord. So, the petrol money, petrol carib. Now, petrol carib money goes with the Venezuela oil contribution donation money. So, if you read between the lines, Lines, pay attention right <sighs> this is sad an inspector general's report had revealed that one of Jovenel Moise's companies build petrol Carib to build roads and that should make no sense because like I said Moise was a Bonon man he was a Plantons man why are you building roads sir so essentially they were accusing him of embezzling funds so you already know that did not go well of course people were automatically assuming it was campaign money but like child it, that shit just did not go over well if you guys did not already connect the dots this is venezuela oil donation money venezuela spanish fake da agents mercenaries connecting the dots this all would correlate so fucking well only because technically Mickey, elite, elite class, upset, Petro Carib, upset. They all could have came together, whipped some shit up, and was like, hey, yo, we don't like him, you don't like him, they don't like him, let's set this ship up. Next theory is definitely the United States and all the other foreign nations that love to mine Haiti's business. It is no secret that there is way too many people that are constantly minding Haiti's business, right? So United Nations, France, and everybody else. So from the beginning of time, since Haiti gained its independence, there's been people that's been bullying the fuck out of Haiti, okay? In terms of give Haiti $132 billion or we're not gonna trade with you guys ever again. I'm dead serious, this is a real thing. Um, so it's one of those things where it's been a constant battle with Haiti and all of these other people ever since they gained their independence to establish a sense of like normalcy right so there is another theory that the United States or some people in the United States have actually set this up for lots of different reasons. One would be, of course, money. Um, people have said that maybe the United States is just like really tired. They wanted the president out to establish a new one because if you guys did not know, Haiti has also had a whole bout of like the United States just coming in and establishing their nonsensical democracy. So maybe they want to put another president in. Of course, there's a whole situation of the fake USDA situation. A lot of people did not know or do not think that those USDA um, agents were fake so they're just going with the whole narrative that those are real USDA agents and think that you know the US just came in swooped in and killed the president. Moise and his refusal to resign was also an issue for the United States because you know it was causing a whole lot of issues and of course there was a whole situation with America refusing to help Haiti rebuild its military which to be honest that's very, that, that's up to debate. Um, if you guys are not aware of why Haiti doesn't have a military, a lot of it stems back to the true dictator, which is the Duvalier situation. You guys can watch my video on that, or you guys can literally do your own research. And whether you are pro Duvalier or anti Duvalier, you have to admit that that's a true dictatorship, okay? You should not be president for more than five years per the constitution. And on top of that, 
realistically speaking these people established their own military and ever since then it's been a question of should we have a military or should we not have a military because last time we had a military they were out here killing civilians for for literally no reason in terms of political opposition so that's why that whole conversation is a whole nother thing and then when we tried to reestablish it again with sweet mickey he had the nerve the gall the audacity to put the clintons on that board which are literally accused of taking all of the earthquake funds so do we really need to worry about that if anything haiti does not need to worry about having a military they need to worry about feeding their fucking people establishing steady electricity and legit education that's what they need to worry about i don't know why the fuck the military is that big of a deal right now y'all live this long without it who the fuck cares i'm just saying i don't think that's the biggest of their worries i mean yes national security is a thing but it's like y'all live this long without it y'all be all right right like yeah i guess maybe in this situation it would be great right <laughs> but i mean nobody came you guys have bigger problems than that maybe you guys need to start holding the elite class responsible the next one would be COVID. now you guys i'm sure you've seen this whole meme flying around and i shared it and i'm mad i didn't do my research we all fail sometimes we all fail um this whole situation of these countries failed to accept the vaccine and now all their leaders are dead guys this is completely inaccurate and i'm mad i didn't research it before i shared it but yes so haiti has denied the vaccine along with madagascar and tanzania and now all their leaders are dead but this is inaccurate because haiti is the only one whose leader was assassinated the other two leaders died heart problems and i believe one leader hasn't been in power for over 20 years so that's completely ruled out as well all of them died of heart related conditions so completely ruled out to be quite honest with you, I believe some way, somehow, all of these worked together because a lot of people just did not like Jules Nell, like to be quite honest with you. And I find it very interesting how like no one really liked him like that for a very long time. Now all of a sudden, everyone is just like trying to act like they did and trying to change their tune. And to be quite honest, yes, it's okay to have humility and to like, you know, change your opinions about people, but it's just kind of like fake to me how all of a sudden people are trying to act all righteous and shit. Um, if you never liked the dude, you never liked the dude and it's okay. Like honestly, I hope that when I die, a lot of y'all who didn't like me stay not liking me don't, don't don't act fake like this this is fucking ridiculous at this point it's okay to not like someone whether they're dead or alive okay if you have your opinions have your opinions but to be honest don't be a fake bitch and honestly do not let the media skew you i never really looked into his presidency or anything like that but now that i've really looked into it i feel like he's not much different from any other president um i feel like all of this was just a really sad circumstance and i feel like a lot of people are being very very biased i don't think he was the best and i don't think he was the worst and i feel like all of this is a lot deeper than a lot of us can really ever understand and a lot of people kind of judging people for being happy or sad or whatever are just full of shit because at the end of the day you don't know why people feel the way they do so you really shouldn't be judging people on that but again it's not okay to be sitting here being happy that anyone's dead that's just fucked up but it's very very interesting to see to see how all of this plays out i can't wait to see what the real official official situation is we've been seeing so much caca fly around okay from haitian americans being arrested to diplomats being arrested to the bolos being investigated this is too fucking much when it comes to this whole haiti vaccine situation what the fuck do haitians need the vaccine for right this is the thing i'm very i'm not taking that fucking vaccine until it's fda approved and licensed i don't give a fuck y'all can take that vaccine if you want to however i'm not taking that shit because at this point y'all just want everybody to take that vaccine next thing you know when there's all these side effects y'all gonna act like oh yeah i didn't know everybody's a walking experiment at this point so you guys want a whole bunch of haitians to take that vaccine when they barely got covid it, haiti has barely gotten covid like some people have gotten it but like barely compared to everybody else in the world they've barely gotten covid and it's to the point where they've literally been sitting there like oh my god it's a phenomenon haitians barely got covid they literally been trying to investigate haitians and you want them to get the fucking vaccine for the why for the what like i said haiti needs to focus on feeding its people educating its people and a lot more other shit not no damn fucking experimental vaccine they do not need a vaccine like they're really sitting here trying to make it seem like haiti is like endangering its people by not accepting the vaccine when they barely have gotten covid like their cases have been completely fine so you guys are probably wondering who's in charge we don't know don't ask me nigga they don't know so we got uh claude joseph who stepped down as prime minister but uh, stepped up 
and he think he the prime minister but he not the prime minister and now he's on tv he doing interviews he's sitting there asking the u.s to bring troops he's sitting here talking about some yeah we we in 15 days of mourning that 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 but he's literally not the prime minister okay ariel henry was actually appointed as the prime minister a couple of days before jovenel was assassinated but I, I don't know why the fuck he not stepping up to do anything at this point maybe he has and i just haven't seen it but honestly in his statement he was like um He's not the prime minister. I'm the prime minister. Claude Joseph is in my government. So that's his statement right there. And then you have Joseph Lambert, who's the only person who was technically elected or voted into anything, who technically is the only person who has any type of authority, but I haven't really seen him anywhere. So the way this works is realistically, per the constitution, the only way anyone can be president is by an election, okay? The way this works in line of succession, it should be the person of the Supreme Court. Now we got Renee, Renee Sylvester is technically the person that should be president right now, but he died of COVID, which is very weird because there's not many COVID cases in Haiti and there hasn't been since COVID started, but rest in peace to him. Very sad shit, but realistically, he would be the only person in the first person in line of succession to be president. And of course, as president of Supreme Court, he was never fucking replaced, followed by the prime minister if they are elected by the parliament. So the prime minister can only be president if they are elected by the parliament, okay? Everybody get a vote. And since there's no parliament, can't nobody vote. Okay, he, he never held an election for to replace the government that left, okay? He never did that, which is fucking everything up right now. A little bit of government left voted Joseph Lambert. So technically he's the only one with any type of authority to be making any decisions for Haiti right now. This is embarrassing bro. Like, I'm sorry, this is really embarrassing. Well, this was a lot. I hope you guys got a lot of different perspectives, but definitely make sure you guys check down the sources in the description and or the pinned comment and leave down your thoughts and opinions down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, make sure you comment down your Haitian flags. Or if you're not Haitian, just leave your prayer hands for the prayer for the families affected by everything that's going on in Haiti right now. Never be ashamed of where you come from. The only difference about what's going on in Haiti and other places in the world is that Haiti's problems and issues are always being aired out like dirty laundry, okay? Every country has its own issues. The only difference between Haiti and everywhere else's issues is that Haiti's issues are always fucking trending. That being said, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that, follow my main channel peep the description box for more information and i'm gonna see y'all next time bye